Well, guys, today we have some pretty fantastic news where we have been told that Ethergazer Global has been confirmed. And on top of that, the publisher for the global version is going to be Yostar. And so with all of that being said, why don't we talk a little bit about Ethergazer, about Yostar, about Yongshi, about the CN version. Now, hi. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace and this is an Ether Gazer video. To start things off, I wanted to show you guys a little bit of the footage, a little bit of the gameplay via the Ether Gazer CN. However, I have been walled over here because I my my Billy Billy ID is not working yet. However, I am in the stages of getting my Billy Billy ID verified, and so hold on for that one. What this does mean is that I do have to resort to taxing from other people's videos. So shout out to Motoyaba for this one over here. Thank you for the gameplay for the budget bubble tower. And so again, before we actually actually go into some of the more finer details like the publishers and all of that i want to show you guys like what exactly this game looked like very much hack and slashy very much action rpg almost dark soulsy but from what i can tell and this is just from a lot of information hunting it is not going to be as hardcore as pgr which is music to my ears because although i liked pgr it was just a tad bit too hardcore for me and so if we take this like a step by step you'll see that that was just a unison attack from two of your different npcs you can see that there are three Three characters on the field one two three uh one up there i think two down here and maybe a third one here however unlike pgr you cannot actually switch into those two other characters you only control the first character and you can see them both down here you can tap on them to activate some skills but other than that they are going to be quite smart apparently and fighting on their own on the other hand what you can see down here is that you have a whole bunch of different skills as for me i'm going to quickly just shut off my webcam so you guys can see this over here there are four different skill slots every single character has different unique skills so although like this is what it's going to look like for this character if you're playing another character then it's going to have other ones so these two are essentially your runes and then you can use them to activate different things uh it gets pretty complex but that's essentially the crux of it and so yes there are quite a few elements that are pretty close to punishing gray raven and others in the genre honkai impact such as your perfect dodges however in this game i believe perfect dodges nets you different benefits depending on the character that you are playing so yeah as you guys can see from the gameplay it is a lot more like Honkai, in my opinion, rather than PGR. Uh, yes, there is the emphasis on those perfect dodges, but it's a lot more like hacky, slashy, and a little bit less Dark Soulsy. All right, and so that said, I want to give you guys a little bit of background in terms of the publishers, the devs, like their previous reputation, and well, should you guys be hyped for this? So, like I was saying before, this game is developed by Yongshi. If you guys don't know who Yongshi are, they developed or they are part developers in Azur Lane. And so, traditionally speaking, Azur Lane has been extremely generous and they have a very very good reputation and so that is from a developer's point of view in terms of the publisher as you heard before it will be published by your star however when i was looking for evidence of this the only evidence i really found was from your boy chaotix video where previously on the twitter page this one over here he was able to actually click into the banner and you can see down here yongshi core ltd and your star over here however when i click into that same banner now they seem to have actually removed it so you can see like under here there is nothing and uh, unfortunately, this kind of removes the your star confirmation. Now, this is certainly not like chaotic lying or anything. I have very high respect for chaotic. I think this is just Ether Gazer. Maybe potentially like the contracts are not done yet. And so maybe let's not publish the fact that we're going to be with your star. Probably still just finalizing a couple of things. So don't be too worried. In terms of your star's reputation, I think a lot of you will know them, especially from Azur Lane as well. So Azur Lane, probably the highest profile lewd ish free to play game. A few other titles that you guys may be familiar with is Arknights, which is pretty much the leader in tower defense games. They also do handle Mahjong Soul, which is a powerhouse, especially in Asia. Revived Witch, which is still coming along. I, I don't really have too many opinions on this one. And Blue Archive JP, for all of you tasteful or tasteless people, depending on how you look at it. So in terms of the running of these games from a publisher point of view, I've only experienced Blue Archive JP. Yes, I did play JP and they were quite generous. Mahjong Soul, unfortunately, I haven't actually played it. Arknights, I did play for like a year, a year and a half, and this game is very, very popular for a good reason. And then Revived Witch, which I did play and was a content creator for. However, unfortunately, I think there were a few too many discrepancies for my liking. In summary, I do think that Yostar is quite a decent publisher, especially for the global scene. And as for Yongshi, as for Azure Lane, I do think that 
this game is in good hands. I mean, they freaking built it after all. And so yeah, with that, let's talk a little bit more about Ethergazer, the game itself. So as you can see, the interface is, you know, it's kind of reminiscent of your Punishing Grey Raven, of your more modern interfaces, considering, I mean, it's, it's in a similar world. However, the one thing that I did want to say before we went any further is curb your expectations, because although the gameplay may be flashy, it may be like super, super fun to actually go and do. As many of you know, unfortunately, I quit Punishing Grey Raven because of the different game modes, such as like Warzone, Babel Tower, as well as the PPC. So from that point of view, it should actually be a little bit more casual. That's why I have higher hopes for this one over here. But what I'm trying to say is that there is a risk that even though you enjoy the gameplay, even though you enjoy like the Dark Souls, the hack and slash or whatever, whatever, you may not enjoy the game modes themselves. And so the last thing I wanted to run through with you guys was this thread over here and some of the highlights because there is a lot of like fantastic information here as to whether this could be a good game or like, you know, it could be a little bit doo-doo. The first thing that makes me really, really excited is that Yostar have managed to sync the three major versions of Azure Lane content parity despite CN and JP launching much earlier than EN. I am a massive fan of these like simultaneous syncs, the content syncs. And so as it stands, the CN version of Ethergazer is about three patches in from launch. And honestly, if we were able to actually get onto like the content sync with CN, I think that would be incredible. In terms of the gap, we have about 35 pulls per month free to play plus five normal banner tickets events add about another 10 excluding handouts so i'm thinking like those ad hoc randomly oh celebration 10k twitter here's another five pulls the thing about this gacha system is that it is much closer to genshin's gacha system than pgr's and so for the character banners Pity activates at 70 rolls, and your second S pulled is the guaranteed rate up on the banner. As for weapons, the Pity is also 70, however, the pickup rate is at 100%, which is fantastic to see. In terms of the rates themselves, we've got S ranks at 1.6% and A ranks at 7.8. However, from here, it gets a little bit icky. The release schedule is very, very fast, with four debut S ranks in two months. So from another thread, I think I saw they were releasing one S rank every 20 days. In my opinion, and just from my past experience in both PGR and Honkai Impact 3, I do think that this is relatively stingy. In Punishing Grey Raven, you're able to actually get every single S rank unit because of the long delays in between each of the banners. And as for Honkai Impact 3, I think it's a little bit less fair to compare considering Honkai has been around for a long time, so they are very much in that generous stage. The next comment I wanted to show you guys is this one here. Gameplay, like PGR, but can't switch characters mid-battle, which is what I said before. However, the AI teammates are very good with procedural skill release and well-calculated dodges. So a lot of the time in that like the matrix mode thing, this can be triggered and is actually triggered a lot by your AI teammates. Now this comment chain is a little bit more depressing. However, there is a little bit of hope there. Yongshu are not known to develop PC clients and YS haven't published mobile games with PC clients yet. However, following that comment, we have this one down here. There is a hint of having a PC client because there are bindings for mouse and keyboard. Now this comment chain is rather interesting where one person is hyping up your star and somebody else just drops revived witch. My personal opinion about all of this is that you can't really just like straight up simp for a publisher like your star or Psy Games, like the developers, or, or this and that. Revive Witch just unfortunately was not overly successful, and I do think that there were a couple of things that they could have done better. However, with that being said, I do think that Yostar has a better track record than the majority of our publishers. Let's just give them the benefit of the doubt. Revive Witch was just a one-time thing. And so the last comment I wanted to touch on is this one over here, where it's basically a casual, friendly version of PGR slash Honkai Impact 3. I think that is really right up my alley because the reason that PGR was just so hard to keep up with was that it was a little bit too hardcore. However, there doesn't seem to be a skip system, but you can multi-run stages, which I do believe Punishing Grey Raven also has right now. But it's probably this part of the comment that I really wanted to point out, which is that he enjoys the gameplay loop of AG. However, temper your expectations since it's not going to be nearly as generous as Azure Lane. And that is kind of what I mean by like temper your expectations. Don't get like giga overhyped because like, you know, it's giga awesome publishers and developers coming together. Me personally, having done a lot of research into what the game is and actually having a look at the gameplay and some of the other systems, I think that this could be a game for me. A more casual version of Punishing Grey Raven 
where it's a lot less punishing when you get freaking slapped, along with a whole bunch of bright colors and top tier waifus. Sure, the generosity may not be there like with Azure Lane, but I'm quite used to saving, like I'm quite used to the Genshin system. I do accept that. And if you can't accept that, then reconsider. All in all, I do have to say I am excited for this game. However, again, my expectations are kind of like kind of there. I thought I'd be playing PGR for like the next two years. I dropped it in like maybe six months, maybe less. And so personally, I definitely will be going in with that kind of mindset. It's like, I may love it. I may go in and love it and play it for the next like couple of years. I may also end up dropping it because I don't like the game modes or some other thing. But yeah, as for whether I'm hyped or not, I'm hyped. I'm hyped. I'm just not like overhyped, you know? For me personally, overhyped would be like for Honkai Star Rail or if Genshin hadn't come out yet and I was following Genshin. That would be overhyped. And yes, unfortunately, I was overhyped for PGR and I kind of let myself down a little bit. However, my guys, with that being said, it is time for the secret question. And that is, well, are you guys hyped for Ether Gazer? Are you guys way more hyped than me? Or are you guys kind of like, oh yeah, I'm hyped? Or are you guys more like, oh yeah, I tried punishing Grey Raven. I didn't really like it. I don't think I really liking these action oriented games. Whatever your answer may be, let me know down in the comments below. And I would really appreciate it if you did leave one. But otherwise, if you did enjoy this video or kind of found it helpful, please consider leaving a a like, subscribing to the channel, or turning on that notification bell on. Otherwise, as uh, as Arthur Gowan said, all good things must unfortunately come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye bye.